Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the framework for work from home solution. So let us quickly understand what the solution framework is all about. The solution framework has three distinct areas. First area obviously is the applications part. Second area is the device access part. And third is the some of the best practices. First, let us look at the application part. Here is a list which you see of some of the applications which we believe are important in order to have this work from home concept a success. We are going to look at each and every one of them over the next few slides. Very clearly, meeting and calling is a very important pillar of the solution framework. So the questions which you need to ask yourself are, do you have a system, a single system, which, which is capable of voice, video, and conferencing? Then the capabilities of the system is, does it allow you to connect different locations of your company? Does it allow you to connect various customers and partners also? Then can you use the system inside the office as well as outside the office? Does your system allow you to chat, to call and to have meetings with the external participants? Does your system allow you to meet the compliance requirements on calling and meeting? Can you take interviews using audio, video and document sharing? And can you capture the meeting notes of such a meeting? These are basic requirements which we believe a system should be capable of handling and which will then allow you to be used in your work from home solution. The next important application is task management. Why? Because work is nothing but series of tasks. So whether you work at home or you work in office, work will always be a series of tasks. So you need a central system of assigning and tracking various tasks. You need a system which is consistent for the users, which allows them to manage their tasks. Now, when you look at tasks, there are very broadly four categories. One is a task, very important. One is a task which you create for yourself. Second is the tasks created by you for others in which case you are assigning the task to others. Third is where tasks are given by others to you. And finally, there are certain joint team tasks which wherein you are a co-owner with some other people. So the system should be allowing you to do all these things in an effective uniform experience so that you are able to deliver what is needed. Next important thing which we do is document management. We, without working with documents, no work is incomplete. Now, documents can be of two types. Personal documents, which are essentially created by a user and consumed by the user, and occasionally you share it. Second are team documents. You know, it could be a sales department, having access to certain sales documents which are used by the process. So these are used by the team and constantly referred by the team. What do you need in those documents? Can multiple people work on one document at the same time? That's called document co-authoring. Can you have a document open and a discussion which can happen 
around the document by multiple people at multiple locations. Let's call it document discussion. Does your system have a document management system have a life cycle cycle wherein you can create, you can approve, you can record, you can archive, and then finally you can delete. The system should be able to do all this. And then can you do a search based on certain keywords? So these are some of the core requirements of a good, decent document management system. Email goes without saying, it is the most widely used mode of corporate communication. And because it is so popular, it is also the single biggest source of security breach. People enter the, you know, the cyber criminals enter the system, corporate system, mainly through email. And so you have to watch out and your system should be able to take care of malicious attachments, malicious links. So, you know, you click on the link and malicious link and then you your system is compromised. So if it's a link is malicious, the system should tell you that this link is not to be touched. Similarly, if you click on attachment, the system should tell you that this attachment is not good. So don't click on this. Then email is also a way in which data leakages happen. So do you have a system which allows you to prevent this data loss through email? Email is also open to spoofing, which means, you know, the people are taking your identity. So your system should be able to protect you from email spoofing. So my submission is that let professionals manage your corporate email system so that it runs like a breeze and people are able to communicate and work from homes as they were before. Next application is knowledge management. So quick questions. Can a new member become ready on an existing project? Does your system allow you to do that? When you are in an office, it's easy to just talk to each other. But here, when you are working from home, there should be a system which by which the new team member can, you know, be quickly mentored. If there's a new hire, how will the new hire be able to engage with other people in the company? Do the employees have access to the best practices? And can they tap into the knowledge of the experts? When an experienced employee leaves, is there any way in which you can retain that knowledge which was given to that employee? All this would be, should be a part of the knowledge management system and which will allow people to effectively work from home. There's this nice simple app which you can see on the screen now. As you can see, it's, it's called as crisis communication. So when there's a crisis, it, it works like in some kind of an intranet. So you have company news. You can see at the bottom, company news. Then there will be some helpful tips. There could be a FAQ section. There could be some important links, emergency contacts. And if you have some requests, you can make a request. So this allows one place where a person can interact and know what's happening in the company. So it's not a very, very complex app. However, we believe that in crisis, this becomes a very, very useful tool. Another system which is very useful is cases and opportunity management. Uh, if there are support teams in your company, they would be opening up various cases whenever anybody asks for help. So there should be a system by which you should be able to track each such request made till it is closed. Similarly, any other non-technical requirement of a customer, it could be, you know, something new to be added, something to be removed, some billing issue, anything which is non-technical support related can be used by the sales team 
It's called the opportunity system. So you are updated there and then you track it till it is closed. So together, the support and sales team and the marketing team also can use a system which is known as CRM or customer relationship management. Then you have these core enterprise applications. Accounts, payroll, inventory, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I believe that the best option is to host them on the public cloud, right? Like Azure, because if it's on the public cloud, you get so much more agility, so much more flexibility. And of course, it's very secure. If for any reason it is not possible, then you to you to essentially give a method to the users to log in into your servers which are hosted on premise, use some secure VPN and then do the work. You also need to have a system in place which can be backing up the data from on premise to the cloud or from cloud to cloud for that matter. You also need to have a disaster recovery site on the cloud for on-prem applications as well as applications on the cloud. So these would form, according to me, a core enterprise applications, which are super critical to ensure that the company runs and runs and runs, even when the, there is a crisis. Having discussed the applications, now let's go to the device part. We believe that there are we can divide the devices into three types. One is a company owned computer. Second is a computer which is owned by the employee. And third is a mobile device or a tablet which is again owned by the employee. If it's a company owned computer, we can set policies by which the data can be accessed only if the device is compliant to certain policies, security policies. In company owned computers, a user will be able to have access on the browser as well as on the applications. For example, if there's an application like Microsoft Outlook, if it's a company owned PC, then the Outlook also will be available and the browser also will be available. Only the authorized person from IT will be able to enroll, should be able to enroll the device. External sharing should be restricted and the USB should be blocked of such company owned computers so that the leakage does not happen. Now let's look at employee owned devices. First look at the computer. If it's a computer, then data and apps you can access only on a browser. You cannot, for example, access your email on Outlook application. If you need to use Outlook, then you have to go to the browser to access it. And if there's an email attachment, then you cannot download it. You can only view the email attachment. These are security aspects because uh, the minute you are able to download the email attachments to your personal PC, then the data is with you and then you can play around with it. When it comes to mobiles and tablets, number one is that you know data access on the browser should be blocked because then the access should only be through approved applications. For example, Office app, Outlook app. So, you know, you have this approved applications. The organizational data should be accessible only through those apps. Screenshot block so that, you know, when there's an important data, you cannot, the user cannot do a screenshot. Printing block, that's another important security aspect. If there's a data which is available, let's say it's come in Outlook on an email, a user should not be able to copy that data and paste it on his uh, personal app, like a notepad or whatever. So that security also needs to be available. And if data needs to be saved, the data can be saved only, the corporate data we are talking about, only on OneDrive and SharePoint, not on the any other application. Some best practices before we sign off. When you're working from home, it's important to have a dedicated workspace. It's not that, okay, I feel like working in this room today, I'll work from another room. No, have a place designated as a workspace. 
so that when you enter that space, you know you are, your mind tells you that, hey, listen, you are now entering workspace. Have a work schedule, stick to it. For example, if you are used to working from, let's say, 9.30 to 5.30 or 9.30 to 6, stick to that. Don't have an ad hoc schedule because then your body will start playing pranks, your mind will start playing pranks and you'll not be able to give the required productivity. Have very, very specific work routines. So if you are used to certain routine wherein you come and you start your PC and then you first handle your tasks and then you go to email and then something else, stick to that. Do team reviews online on a regular basis so that everybody in the team is on the same page. When you're using video meetings, you can always blur the background. That is, you know, a good thing to do. Sometimes some backgrounds you don't want to be exposed to. Use your calendar. Make your calendar your best friend. Make ensure that you manage your time very well and you plan your work very well. Allocate tasks into the calendar so that, you know, you are able to really attack those tasks in the most efficient manner. There are so many more practices, best practices. However, these are some of the ones which I've listed to get going. Hopefully, you have understood the framework and you have understood how you can, you know, have these uh, different applications and devices coming into play. And with these, you will be definitely be able to work reasonably efficiently from your home also. Thank you very much and have a great day.